What is going on, chefs? So today, I actually wanted to talk about uh, kitchen horror stories. A lot of these were shared through Facebook and I got a collection of them and I wanted to share them with you guys. So I suppose I'll just kind of mosey on over to this side of the screen and uh, we'll just fucking go. So the whole thread started with this dude that posted a uh, short 20 second clip and uh, he says, this is my first post. So if it's against the rules, I'm sorry. Almost a year ago, we had a girl who got her hand stuck in a meat tenderizer. I had to remove her hand from the blades, clean the kitchen, and remove the pieces of skin from the blades. Has anyone else had any wild work experiences? Nothing like that, dude. Uh, the videos provided are the tenderizer that did the deed. She still has three fingers, three broken fingers later. So that's pretty fucking wicked, dude. And obviously, I'm not going to sh share any uh, any graphic pictures or anything like that. Um, but a bunch of people did respond. So we're just going to go through some of them right now. Work in a smaller kitchen. So the kitchen owns everything. But when I started, I had to saw through shit with the knives. So it took 20 minutes and sharpened them. Uh, I don't know how long since they had been sharpened, so I left a note saying, Caution, razor sharp. I came in the next day and saw my car co-workers with a bandage where she had sliced off the two tips of her fingers, looked at her and asked, Knife? She responded, Knife. She did not believe that they were sharp. The, a couple things. So with the first one with the meat tenderizer, like that one I could see it being... Uh, an innocent mistake. It's not anything that anybody should get in trouble for. It's sometimes those meat tenderizers, when you put the meat in there, they fucking meat, they like yank it out of your hand. And if you don't have a garden place, that's something that's more, um, more on the managers, especially if you need to be trained on some of this stuff first. Um, these things are nasty. As you, as you saw from the video, I mean, they have, it just looks like a death machine, right? So, um, it actually reminds me a little bit of a wood chipper, honestly. But, uh, but yeah, so that one was horrible. With the knife sharpening one, you know, if you're not used to sharp knives, that kind of shit's going to happen. What I usually do, the universal symbol at work, uh, is to either take a piece of tape or a rubber band or something and wrap it around the blade itself so you know that, hey, these knives are sharp. Uh, and I'll go through every once in a while and sharpen all the knives, um, all the house knives. I have my own knives, but I'll sharpen the house knives in case anybody wants to use just whatever we have around or if they don't bring their knives in, etc. But yeah, I mean, knife safety is a big deal. Um, I actually thought about doing a, a video on knife safety uh, sometime in the future. All right, well, let's move on. Recently, a security guard at the place I used to work at put a cardboard box on top of the six, oh, on top of the six top stove. Six top. Oh, he's probably talking about like six burners and the pilot light lit it on fire. It set off the Ansel system, $14,000 cleanup, and $20,000 to refill the Ansel, all because the security guard wanted to steal some snack cakes. I'm sure he probably got fucking fired. So for people that are not line cooks, an Ansel system is a required system for any uh, cooking thing that we have in the kitchen, anything that cooks food, that will produce uh, any type of aerosolized grease. It's, it's part of the hood vent system, and it essentially works like, it. once it gets triggered, there's usually a temperature threshold around 350 to 400 degrees, depending on uh, what it's calibrated to, and there's little clips in there. And once those clips melt, it sets the system off and it sprays shit everywhere. It's like a three to five day cleanup. If it happens to uh, like a small time restaurant, that restaurant may close down permanently because of something like that, because of how expensive it is to fill it. If they don't have the money because of how little the margins are, they don't have the money to refill and clean up and everything, they could go out of business. Like, it's just, it's, I feel really bad for them. And on top of that, it was because somebody was trying to steal something. So yeah, fuck that guy, fucking asshole. Anyways, uh, let's move on. Let's go to the next one. At a deli, a lady was cleaning the slicer and took the tip of her finger off. I wasn't there for the energy, 
or, oh my God, I wasn't there for the injury. I was out on a smoke break, but had to close down and clean the machine and sterilize the area. Yeah, so uh, there's a lot of workplaces where if you slice your fingers on a slicer or a mandolin after being shown the proper way uh, to clean them, some places have a lockout tag out system, which I'll get into in another video. Um, but these, these things, uh, are known to have very sharp blades on them. There's some places that have chainmail gloves that you're supposed to use when you clean these machines. And, uh, you're supposed to leave them unplugged. You're supposed to have the dial turned all the way to zero on the meat slicer. You have to be very careful. Uh, some of them have blade locking mechanisms to keep the blade from spinning. So if you're slicing your fingers on this, uh, mandolins are supposed to have guards and there's very specific ways you're supposed to clean them. So if you get injured on them, unfortunately, this is one of those situations where even though it sucks, it's kind of your fault. You kind of deserve to either be written up or fired or whatever, depending on what the circumstances is. Literally, there are the, these meat slicers are upwards of $3,500 and they have a shitload of safety features to stop this from happening, plus the training that you're supposed to get before you start handling these meat slicers. So if you're slicing your hands, it's your fault. It sucks. I know it does. An ER visit should be enough punishment, but unfortunately, that's kind of on the person. And yeah, and then the other thing that sucks about it is when, when you get human blood on things, like there's things that need to be thrown away, there's sterilization procedures, there's just so much that, uh, that you need to take care of. But anyway, moving on. Let's see, a guy who worked for the previous owners of a kitchen I worked for had his entire hand sent through the meat tenderizer. Another meat tenderizer story. You know, it was like the first one we talked about. They still use the same machine to this day. Well, you know, I don't really blame them. I mean, this is the price range of, uh, of one of the commercial grade meat tenderizers that this person is talking about and that I showed you a clip of in the beginning. They're fucking expensive, but anything that's NSF certified, those things are designed. Part of the reason why you need NSF certified equipment in your kitchen, they need to be designed to be cleaned properly and correctly, easily, etc. So there are specific procedures and systems in place in order to make sure that there is no human flesh in something that would take the hand off of somebody. Yeah, the machine's gonna be out of commission. It may need to be professionally done just to make sure it's absolutely 100% sterilized. Um, and it's an awful thing. It, it's a really awful. Um, I look at these things and it, I just, I get shivers sent down my spine with how fucking disgusting they look. I mean, they look like they were invented by Satan. <laughs> Be careful of the commercial grade meat tenderizers. All right, next story. This is a little bit of a long one. Bear with me. Hold on. There we go. We had a lady once who was doing prep. She was the only one person who didn't use the cover on the slicing machine. That's what I talked about, safety procedures. Uh, well, around Halloween a couple years ago, she completely cut off the entire tip of her right index finger. She went into an instant panic. Blood was everywhere. Two of the four managers were panicking. One of the not panicked was just hoping she could work in two days. Ob she obviously couldn't. That sounds really fucking familiar for restaurant business. I'm actually going to do a video on uh, that type of culture in the future. So stay tuned. Uh, well, the cool kitchen manager helped her. He even put her fingertip, which he found. He even put her, oh, I read that right. He even put her fingertip, which he found, and put it in a cup of ice for the paramedics when they showed up. I saw the pictures whenever I showed up to work that evening. That is so fucked, dude. Okay, so pay attention to the meat slicers. Slicing the tips of your fingers off on a mandolin or a meat slicer because you are not paying attention. The number one way to avoid cuts is to pay attention. I've been in the industry for 18 years. Yes, I've cut myself on a knife before, but never like cut my fingertips off on a meat slicer or a mandolin or anything like that. You guys need to be so much more careful than this. Um, if you're a new cook and you're watching this, man, like take this shit seriously. Unplug the meat slicer. Don't roll your eyes at having to use a chainmail glove if you have to use one of those or if they require cut gloves. It's because of shit like this 
that those things are in place. If something like this happens, if the tip of your finger gets sliced off or some another coworkers, the number one thing you wanna do is have it raised above heart level. Have them hold it in the air, put a lot of pressure on it, keep it from bleeding. If there's a literal tip of your fingers somewhere, Yes, they need to go on ice. Uh, a lot of times, as long as it's found within like a four or five hour window, it can be sewn back on. So the other thing is, I know it's gonna be hard if you are the person that received the cut, but you need to stay calm. You need to keep your, your blood from flowing rapidly. And part of that is lowering the heart rate. Lowering the heart rate means being calm. You can't change anything, it already happened. Um, Communicate with people. Um, I actually had a nail gun. I was uh, hooking up a, um, uh, I was doing some construction work and I was framing a house. And uh, I was the dumbass that did this. It wasn't a meat slicer, but it was a nail gun. Well, the nail gun, I, I had to hold the, the studs a certain way in order to nail them. And one particular stud was like, so there's the, the floor. I'm trying to not use jargon. So there's the two by four that goes all around the floor and you know, you have the general flame, you have your king stud frame, you have your king studs, and then you have your, your top piece and your bottom piece of wood, right? And then you have the studs coming down like that. So one of the studs, when I had it butted up against the bottom piece, kept po poking up like this. And so I used my hand to physically push it down and then I used the nail gun to nail it in place. I got careless, I had a nail go straight through my fucking finger and poke my uh, nail out. Uh, so I didn't have it happen at a uh, cook job, but I did have it, I did have something happen uh, before that was pretty nasty. And the thing is, is that it didn't hurt because my body went into, into like, you know, survival mode. Uh, it didn't hurt right away. It actually hurt a lot less than some other things like burns and stuff that I've had. But what did happen is I went pale and I almost went into shock. Shock isn't something that you can really predict or control depending on what actually is the thing that's happening to you. Uh, a lot of people when they die, they will die of shock before they die of bleeding out. Um, our bodies are amazing, they're awesome, but they have their limitations. Unfortunately, that's a limitation. So just be mindful of that. Depending on how severe the, the accident is, somebody could go into shock. And then there's very specific things that you do about that. I'm not a paramedic, I'm not about first aid, I'm not about to sit here and tell you how to handle that situation. One more, one more. I had a dumbass listen to that song, Stan, from Eminem. He turned to look at me, we were doing prep, and he said, doesn't this song just make you wanna? And he motioned his knife like he was cutting himself, but he did it really fast and actually slid his wrist open. Jesus fucking Christ. Had to go to the emergency room and got fired. What an idiot. Dude, so I gotta say, I'm actually gonna make a different video on this. Um, yeah, the guy was stupid, but at the same time, when someone is motioning like that, when somebody's talking like that, um, there's probably a lot more going on than them just being stupid or, you know, fanfare and things like that. It's actually probably a pretty serious issue. Um, and then getting fired on top of that would probably compound it and make their situation worse. So yeah, it was a stupid move. Um, you know, if you're gonna do something stupid like that, just use the back of your knife. Better yet, don't do it at all. But I mean, like, if you're gonna be dumb, like, at least be dumb safely, <laughs> if you can, if that's even a thing. But yeah, I'm actually gonna do, um, and let me know in the comments if you wanna see a video like this. I'm actually gonna do a video talking about uh, depression, addiction, suicide, stuff like that for uh, cooks. So uh, yeah, let me know, uh, but, Man, that was kind of a sad one to end on. Fuck. If you have any uh, lingering feelings, any sad thoughts or anything like that, it's really important to share them with somebody, a friend, a family member, or anything like that. You know, I would, I would say, uh, hmm. 
you know, I'm not going to be like one of those people that just throws the, the number up there and whatever because it's really, uh, I, I hate it when people do that with me. I've actually dealt with depression my whole life uh, as well, which is why I'm so passionate about this. I'm going to do a different video on this. But that aside, I want to hear about your own personal horror stories. What are some what are some crazy stories that you have in your kitchen? You know, cuts, bumps, scrapes, crazy customers, any of that. I want to hear that down below. Otherwise, you guys have an awesome day, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.